been, Miss Fairfax? Pray don't talk to me about the weather, Mr. Worthing. Whenever people talk to me about the weather, I always feel quite certain that they mean something else, and that makes me so nervous. I do mean something else. <laughs> I thought so. In fact, I'm never wrong. <laughs> And I would like to be allowed to take advantage of Lady Bracknell's temporary absence. I would certainly advise you to do so. Yeah. Mama has a way of coming back suddenly into a room that I have <coughs> not to speak to her about. Miss Fairfax, ever since I met you, I have admired you more than any girl I have ever met since <laughs> I met you. <laughs> yes, I'm quite aware of the fact. And I often wish that in public, at any rate, you had been more demonstrative. <laughs> For me, you have always had an irresistible fascination. Even before I met you, I was far from indifferent to you. We live as a Mr. Worthing in an age of ideals. The fact is constantly mentioned in the more expensive monthly magazines and has reached the provincial pulpits, I am told. And my ideal has always been to love someone of the name of Ernest. There is something in that name that inspires absolute confidence. The moment Algernon first mentioned to me that he had a friend called Ernest, I knew I was destined to love you. You really love me, Gwendolyn. Passionately. <laughs> Darling, don't you know how happy you've made me? My own Ernest. <laughs> but you don't really mean to say that you couldn't love me if my name wasn't Ernest. But your name is Ernest. <laughs> yes, I know it is. But supposing it was something else, do you mean to say you couldn't love me then? Ah, uh, that is clearly a metaphysical speculation, and like most metaphysical speculations, has very little reference at all to the actual facts of real life as we know them. Personally, darling, to speak quite candidly, I don't much care about the name Ernest. I don't think the name suits me at all. It suits you perfectly. It is a divine name. It has a music of its own. It <laughs> well, really, Gwendolyn, I must say that I think there are lots of other much nicer names. I think Jack, for instance, <laughs> is a charming name. Jack? No, there's very little music in the name Jack. If any at all, indeed. It does not thrill. It produces absolutely no vibrations. I have known several Jacks. And they all, without exception, were more than usually plain. Besides, Jack is a notorious domesticity for John, and I pity any woman who is married to a man called John. She would probably never be allowed to know the entrancing pleasure of a single moment's solitude. The only really safe name is Ernest. Gwendolyn, I must get christened at once. I mean, we must get married at once. There's no time to be lost. Married, Mr. Worthing? Well, surely, you know that I love you, and you led me to believe, Miss Fairfax, that you were not absolutely indifferent to me. I adore you, but you haven't proposed to me yet. Nothing has been said at all about marriage. The subject has not even been touched on. Well, may I propose to you now? I think it would be an admirable opportunity, admirable opportunity. And to spare you any possible disappointment, Mr. Worthing, I think it only fair to tell you quite frankly beforehand that I am fully determined to accept you. Gwendolyn! <laughs> yes, Mr. Worthing, what have you got to say to me? You know what I've got to say to you. Yes, but you don't say it. Gwendolyn. <laughs> 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 I'm showing this to your wife. Of course I will. <laughs> how long, how long you have? <laughs> how long you have? I have had very little experience in how to My own. Come on. I've never loved anyone in the world but you. 